Hello everyone. Welcome to the course of satellite communications. In today's class, we are going to learn about various non-geostationary orbit. Okay. In short, we also call them as NGSO. Okay. So there are several orbits which are considered as non-geostationary orbits. From there, we are considering most important uh, orbits, which are nothing but equatorial orbits. inclined orbits elliptical orbits molnia orbits and sun synchronous orbits okay so what are all these orbits how they are different from other orbits let us see okay so if you consider the equatorial orbit as the name indicates so here we have taken the reference of few diagrams so as the name indicates equatorial orbits if you see the diagram over here okay so uh, the orbit path what generally what is this particular orbit orbit path is nothing but an where the satellites travel the path where the satellites travel along the or around the earth right so this is an orbital path which is around the earth where particular satellites are traveling in that particular path okay now if you see this particular equatorial part okay or this particular equatorial orbit okay it is parallel to the equator or it lies in the plane of an equator of the earth okay that's why the orbital path which is similar to the equator of the earth or lies in the path of an equator of the earth okay that particular orbit can be considered as the equatorial orbit okay now coming to the inclined orbits okay suppose consider this earth okay so this is an equator let us say okay now any orbit if at all the orbit is with respect to this particular equator okay it forms some kind of zero degrees so we are considering it as like this it forms with respect to equator of the earth if at all the uh, orbit path is there it forms zero degrees so with respect to the this particular orbit with respect to equator forms zero degrees that means we are calling it as equatorial orbit okay now let's take the same orbital path as a reference or with respect to what with respect to equator of the earth this is an earth and this is an orbit okay in this orbit a satellite is moving now let us consider an equator of an earth okay now with reference to this particular equator of the earth this orbital path which you can see here makes an angle it is more than 0 degrees right it can be more or less than 0 degrees but it is not equal to the equator right so any orbital path if at all it makes an angle with the equator of the earth okay it can be considered as inclined orbit or any satellite which is moving in an orbital path which makes an angle with respect to the equatorial path of an earth or equator of an earth it makes some angle okay that particular angle can be considered as inclined orbit or the satellites with respect to satellite we call them as inclined orbit satellites okay so it need to make some sort of angles okay like this okay now coming to the elliptical orbits we have already studied okay few orbits will be in circular shape and few orbits will be in elliptical shape okay so whenever a smaller object is moving around a larger orb object with respect to in an elliptical order okay that thing we will be considering it as elliptical orbits okay if you see here okay the earth is moving around the sun in which order in an elliptical path or in an elliptical order okay so this particular orbit which is uh, you see here is an elliptical shape and the earth is moving around the sun in the elliptical order okay 
So whenever a particular satellite or a smaller body is moving in an elliptical order around the larger orbit, it can be with respect to Earth and the Sun, or it can be with respect to a satellite or an Earth. Okay. So mostly we can say that uh, the velocity of that particular satellite or the Earth moving around the Sun or the Earth, okay keeps on changing okay at, at some point of the time okay the satellite will be nearer to the earth and, and at this another point of the time the satellite will be far away from the earth okay so that's where the point we get apogee point and the perigee point okay so elliptical uh, orbits are nothing but which are in elliptical in shape or elliptical in parts where the satellites move around the earth or where the earths move around the sun okay that is the shape okay now coming to the molnia orbits okay this is little bit special orbit okay let's see what the specialty of it okay so see so a uh, russian or a russia had difficulties in communication design problem okay so as their uh, land masses are in northern latitudes okay uh, the Russia had very much of difficulty in communication problem. Okay, the designing of the communication system, everything was a messy and it was a little bit uh, problem kind of thing. Okay, so for that, they have customized their particular orbital plane or an orbital path. Okay, so they have introduced a new orbit called as Molnia orbits and they have designed a separate satellite for that when for which we call it call them as Molnia satellites. Okay. So this particular orbit, which is called as Molnia orbit. Okay. It was introduced by Russia. Okay. So there were two Molnia orbits, which were separated by almost 180 degrees. Okay. And have an inclination or makes an angle with the equator. Okay. So these Molnia orbits are elliptical in shape, which you see he here. Okay. So this can be a Molnia orbit. Okay. It's a, just a diagram. Molnia orbit. This is in elliptical in shape. Okay. And the specialty of this Molnia orbit is, okay. This orbit is introduced or designed in, uh, in such a way that, okay. One side of the orbit is very, very close to the earth and another side of the orbital path is very much far away from the earth. Okay. So if you see over here, okay, it, at this point, particular point, okay, of the Molnia orbit, the distance between the earth and the orbital path is very, very less. Okay. So the distance between the earth and the orbital path is just 500 kilometers. Okay. This point can be considered as we already studied, right? Perigee point. Okay. Now, whenever it is this particular uh, earth, uh, orbital path is nearer to earth. We are considering it as perigee point and coming to the Molnia satellite, it is somewhat like only 500 kilometers away from each other. Okay. Now coming to the opposite end of the orbital path as the earth is one sided to that particular orbital path, what happens? Okay. The other side will be, there is a huge gap. How much gap is there? The distance between other side of the orbital path. And the earth is almost 40,000 kilometers. 40,000 kilometers. Okay. This point, if at all a particular object or a body is far away from the earth in an orbital plane, we call it as apogee point. Okay. We already studied in unit one. If you don't know the topics or the concept of apogee point and perigee point, you can go through those uh, topics. Okay. So this Molnia uh, orbit is uh, introduced in such a way that, okay, at one end, it will be very, very nearer or closer to the earth. And at the other end, it will be very, very far away from the earth. Okay. So this particular uh, Molnia orbit have as, has an advantage. Okay. Consider any two satellites on a Molnia orbit. Okay. Any two satellites in a Molnia orbit, which is moving around the earth can cover entire Russia in just 24 hours. Okay. 
so the orbital period it uh, approximately 12 hours okay so if you consider two molnar satellites okay it can con uh, cover the entire russia in just 24 hours these are the uh, specialties of molnia orbits okay now let's see the next orbit so the next orbit is sun synchronous orbits okay so the sun synchronous orbits so this is the special orbit which maintains constant aspect angle with respect to the direction of the sun okay so these orbits are used for satellites that need amount of sunlight okay so it is a special orbit which maintains constant aspect angle with respect to direction of the sun means okay this particular angle sees that okay these particular satellites or the smaller bodies which are moving in the orbital path okay always pointed towards the sun and the sun rays will be always falling on this particular okay uh, satellites okay which are moving in their particular orbits okay and these orbits are used and helpful for the satellites that needs constant amount of sunlight okay why we need a uh, satellites to gain always a sunlight okay 24 hours or uh, 365 days what is the necessary okay satellites which are gathering all the weather information okay so we call them as meteorological satellites okay so these satellites are nothing but weather monitoring satellites okay they require const constant sunlight okay so based on the constant sunlight only the sensors used for this particular satellite okay they can able to predict the weather forecasting okay so this is for which the sun synchronous objects or i mean orbits are used they are always these satellites will be or the orbital path which in which the satellites are moving will be always synchronizing with the sunlight okay they see that the orbital path is designed in such a way that the su su sunlight will be always falling on the satellites what are these satellites these satellites of meteorological satellites which are nothing but in simple terms we can call them as weather monitoring satellites okay based on these only all the weather forecast will be dependent okay so sun synchronous orbits molnia orbits designed by russia and elliptical orbits based on the shape inclined orbits based on the angle with respect to the equator and equatorial orbits which are very much falling with respect to the plane of equator of the earth okay these are the several different types of orbits along with the along with the geostationary orbits they uh, used okay so not only geo okay there are non geo like these orbits each orbits plays a different role based on the applications of the uh, several uh, requirements okay thank you